Well, welcome back to the next installment of the IC video series with Tim Rowe and Scott Forsty. So happy to be here with you today. We are going to spend some fun time talking about ACS and SQL services. Now, one could make the argument that my favorite topic is ACS. Oh, Scott. but Tim, <laughs> I, I, I beg to differ. IBM I or SQL services, they're, they're number one. Well, of course, depending on when you either one of us, we may also talk about the other as the most important as well, because I also agree with you, Scott, being that SQL services are a huge way forward on our platform. Now, they go hand in hand. All right, keys to success. There are some amazing things that we've been doing in our operating system over the past several releases, especially in some of these latest TRs. And if you want to be successful, you got to stay current, bottom line. Right, Scott? Indeed. Well, what does current mean? It's your operating system level, your database PTF group, and of course, Tim, ACS. How do we stay current in, with ACS? Well, there's two options on staying current with ACS now. You can go to our download page. The link is right there. It's been there forever. Works fantastic. But in the last version of ACS, we delivered it now also via PTFs. And so those are the two most current PTFs. Some refreshes are coming in a couple of days, weeks. Or if you get the latest HTTP PTF group, you always have the latest version of ACS actually installed on your IBMI. So let's transition to some of these IBMI services. Uh, this has truly been a radical change uh, and a strategic improvement on how we access the information on our system. You know, Tim, we've been adding in these services uh, for a good number of years, and I have to commend the team. Uh, they really went above and beyond in this latest technology refresh cycle uh, to earn this certificate of awesomeness. Um, what, what more can I say? I mean, I can't argue with you, Scott. 24 enhancements is crazy. This is fantastic. So if you follow Tim's advice and stay current, you too will be able to do some of the things we're about to show you. Well, with these IBM I services, we've got a bunch of categories that we've been focusing on. And they're all documented out in our Knowledge Center as well as our new support portal links. Um, for this particular video, we want to hone in on one specific one, and then we'll kind of work our way around to some of the others in subsequent videos as we um, talk about these incredible services and really change the game on how you can do things. So for this one, let's take a minute to talk about IFS. IFS is truly widely used. Would you not agree, Scott? I see where you're going with this, and I'm liking it. It's incredibly widely used, but it is wildly managed. Do you really have a clue about what's going on in your IFS? And part of it is it's very cumbersome and difficult to get at the information in the tools that we have today. Well, the good news is we have a better option. We have the ability to figure out, right? Largest, oldest, used, ownership, locks, public access. And this gives you the opportunity to take your management of IFS from some random pile of stuff to something that is a sight to behold, is neat and tidy and well understood. Would you not agree, Scott? Uh, I agree with you again, Tim. It's, it's time to dream big with what you can do with um, ACS, SQL, and bringing some order to the IFS. So, Scott, let's talk about privileges for a minute. Um, do you have any thoughts on how we might be able to accomplish that, maybe? You know, when we talk to clients, Tim, we're, we're, we don't even ask them, oh, do you use the IFS? Because it's, it's, it's everywhere. Everybody's using it. Then if, if you do get into a discussion about does your security implementation match your security strategy, um, of course, you, you get the, the expected reaction. People, either they they know it does not, or um, they, they frankly aren't looking at it. With it like you grew a third horn and you have no clue what they're, they're talking about. <laughs> Indeed. So now bring in some of these SQL services to, to bring, bring that order and insight into the business. This first one that you're showing, IFS object privileges, was added in our latest technology refresh, and it's a game changer, Tim. You can look at specific 
um, objects in the IFS. This one's an absolute path name, and you'll get one row for every public or private privilege. You can also turn this, this guy loose on a whole directory or even a tree and find out macro level information, all from SQL. This, this is crazy, Scott. Now, the thing that makes these things so powerful, I mean, this alone with nothing else around it is super powerful. But let's talk about the ability that you have with SQL. Let's talk about combining things. This is where you can really go totally crazy on this. Yeah, it's so simple. It still fits on the slide, but the under the covers here, we're discovering all the objects owned by by myself in this case, and yeah. we're we're handing those off to this new object privileges function, and we're discovering what is the configuration for public. Public would be the default. If if you if you don't have private privilege, then the rules of public will apply to you. And of course, the results easy to see. The answers. It's amazing. Uh, once you start to see this kind of detail, the lights start to turn on. Yeah. Well, not to leave you with just one little thing to go play with. We've got a few other examples that we want to show you, of course, in a live manner. So I'm going to use my friend, um, the uh, uh, insert from examples, and I've gone into the search bar and I'm going to type in IC because I, I named it. Um, a predefined thing. Here's our SQL that we have, Scott, and I'm going to go ahead and insert that into our Run SQL scripts page, where we have a couple of examples that can show some pretty interesting things. So, Scott, you want to describe this uh, this first one, and I'll go ahead yeah. and uh, run it. So it's it's similar to what what Tim showed on the the PowerPoint, except the the focus of the ownership is session underscore user, which is a special register in SQL, and this is going to equate to Tim's user profile. Um, in this case, the, that is Timmer. We'll see all the objects owned by Timmer, and we can start judging Tim on his, uh, um, his configuration of security. So if you scroll down, Tim, in that result set, um, let's, let's see what's on the bottom. Secret stuff. Hmm. Oh. Okay. Why don't you scroll to the right a little bit? User Timmer secret stuff. All sorts of good yeses in there for everything. Show me the public. Public? Oh yeah, that's wide open. There we go. Set to RW Tim. So yeah, we got that. Every every we want every we want everybody to understand the secrets, don't we? So oh, wait, your secrets are wide open to be read <laughs> no. by everybody and changed by everybody. That's, yeah, that's not good. So let's go ahead and take a look at our secret stuff uh, directory here. We'll look at just those privileges. So this is okay, there we go. Yeah, this is gonna be the directed study, only this one file, so it's an absolute path name, and we see multiple rows because there's one for public, Timmer, and oh, thanks, I even get my own privilege. Hey, how come you get to see my secrets? What the heck? This is your security implementation, Tim. Now with this knowledge, um, we can be burdened by some action. You know, you're going to see this information and you're probably going to want to change some things. Absolutely. All right. Uh, if I can't get a hold of it because it's locked. I can't change it. There's an SQL service to discover which jobs are holding locks over files. So go ahead and run that, that user defined table function query, please, Tim. And we'll see if, if we can see any activity yeah. there. Oh, uh, lo Scott's, and behold. Scott's got it. Guess who's changing your secret stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no surprises there. No yeah. surprises there. But people could use this function maybe within applications if they ever met with issues where their interactions with IFS objects were failing due to, to lock contention. Oh my word, this is incredibly powerful, being able to go find this. I hear about people asking about locks on IFS directories on a regular basis. And the previous art was, there was a way to do it within the web navigator, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it was a multi-step multi, multi -step way to get to where you needed to go. Here, we have an incredibly simple, nice IBMI service uh, that, that you can now save into your own little favorite. All right, let's get on and to the next After one. that, it, it, it's basically a, a superset of the previous one. It shows, shows more summary information about the references, the current references to it. So the, those two go hand in hand. The, the last uh, or the, the next one on line 45 takes a slightly different look at, 
at the IFS using system limits, a well-established resource on your IBMI, where you can see the, the largest consum con consumers of all the different IFS um, uh, architected limits. And this might be your way of launching into a study of, um, well, this was a point in time in system limits, but what is it right now? You can use IFS object statistics or object privileges or, or some of these um, other table functions to get the job you know, done. These table functions are pretty darn awesome and, and, and whatnot. Same with the, uh, even the columns in here, but I mean, Scott, how do I, how do I find these dumb things? This is crazy. So one thing I'd like to point out is I, I, in this one above here on line 39, QSYS2, if I use our new prompter and do prompting, check this out. I have all of the services that are in the QSYS2 library right here. You have to love content assist. Uh, and anything you this love as much as I love content assist, you better start using it. <laughs> this is amazing because now I don't have to ever go to the SQL manual or the other manual to find this stuff. It's right here. It's at your fingertips. You can build the SQL. We, we try to name these things well, but certainly this helper function um, should should fall in and be used. This this line 52, Tim, um, where we have a select star, that's just, just a classic way to get going with SQL, but I think you can do a, a step better. Oh, I, I, even, I, even I can do a step better on this one. I mean, I obviously, I want to have, you know, path name. I probably want to have object type. Uh, any, anything else that might be of interest to you? Maybe the, uh, oh, and last used, last used is always good. Uh, just hit enter. Now I've changed that wildly crazy SQL that was at the bottom. And now I have a really nice defined set of information that's right here in front of me. You're coding SQL and I don't think you even touched the keyboard. Isn't that awesome? The, the best part is, you know, we give you this SQL here, not only in ACS, but one of the other things that we've talked about, Scott, is not just getting this information, but then putting it to work for you, being able to automate things. So just as a quick transition, out in the world of uh, the open source space, GitHub has a place called GIST. Scott has some amazing GISTs out here. There's 42 of them at the moment. So he's kind of gone above and combine these things and bring automation to your world. This one right here, ACS on building spreadsheets. I think this is a fascinating use case when we talk about automation, because uh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of SQL here up in the beginning that he has to set stuff up and Scott can talk to it. But at the end of the day, we're creating a job schedule entry that's going to automatically create a spreadsheet every day based on some information that we're after. You know, Tim, um, our, our, our clients are rightfully focused on automation and with SQL, you can achieve something I refer to as extreme automation. Without, without, a, without a doubt. Very powerful stuff that you can do. So we'll leave you with our GIST site so that you can figure out how to extend your reach with IBMI and our new IBMI services. Scott, any other closing uh, um, thoughts? Look for similar uh, topics to be covered in future uh, IC video blog sessions, and thanks. And we'll continue to update the background here as our weather and team. Everybody, have a wonderful day, and thanks for joining.